Well, I survived surgery. It wasn't as bad as I expected. Nothing to worry about. Details to come. Well, how are you? I'm now back from surgery, and as you can see, they've taken the original dressings off. I've got four puncture wounds. You can see two of them here. The other two are at the back, and I've got a sling on just there, supporting the arm. Right now, though, I'm actually not in any pain, not in any discomfort. Maybe a slight bit of tightness, but nothing bad so far. I've been told I've got quite a high tolerance to pain, so hopefully that's what it is, although I wouldn't be surprised as I'm still on a lot of pain mentally. The anaesthetic is still there, plus I'm on codeine and I'm on paracetamol. So what happened to me at the hospital? What I'd like you to remember first is I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a medical expert, I'm a patient. So everything you hear is my perception of what happened. It's honest and it's genuine to the best of my knowledge. If I've left anything out, I do apologise. I though have put links to my previous videos on this issue and links about the condition calcific tendonitis that I've had. First, let me tell you the type of surgery I had, and I've got it written down here. I want to get it correct for you to do it justice. Here it is. I had. Given his previous management, I have recommended consideration to a right shoulder arthroscopy, subacromial decompression, and excision of calcium. Basically, he put four incisions into me. A lot of people maybe have two or three, but I have. Well, I had a lot of calcium which needed to be removed and I needed to make a little bit more space for my arm to move my shoulder to operate. So that's what I had done, basically. And the arthroscopy, of course, involves putting a mini camera so they can see what's up and make any further diagnoses and all of that. So I arrived at the hospital. I was met by the admissions officer, showed me to my room. I was very nervous. A nurse came in, gave me my dressing gown, uh, gave me forms to fill in, etc. And gave me my outfit, gave me my slippers, gave me my um, deep vein thrombosis socks, which you need during surgery, and gave me these funny paper type underpants because uh, if you want to wear your own, you've got to have all cotton. Anyway, I, as you may know from previous videos, have a huge phobia of needles. And when I say that, it's not a joke. I have hyperventilated before, I've passed out before, I've even chickened out of a blood test. Uh, people say the more exposure you get to needles, the better it becomes for me. No, it, that's not been the case. I mean, this year I've had various things done. I'm not complaining, that's life. The staff have all been brilliant, but it hasn't got any easier. And the anaesthetist, you'll have a surgeon, you'll have an anaesthetist. The anaesthetist, of course, deals with pain relief, helps make you unconscious, helps revive you after surgery. and I met up with him, talked about my options. A lot of people that go down, they'll have a nerve block often in their neck to numb them, etc., and put the injection in with the anaesthetic. Because I have a huge needle phobia, I spoke to him about having gas, and he gave that to me as an option. And he said not to worry, and that did take a lot of my mind. So the nurses came in, took my blood pressure, took my weight. I'd already gone down and had an x-ray done before the operation. So the anaesthetist recommended that, yes, I could have the gas. So I sort of waited around a bit, filled in any forms, filled in the consent forms and all of that. The surgeon came up, we had a chat, he told me not to worry. He told me what he was going to do. I don't like blood and all of that, so he didn't go into too many details. So the nurse had me all ready for surgery. I walked down, it was like walking to the death chamber. I know that's pathetic to say, but that's how it feels. I've never had surgery. I had it once when I was four for the trigger thumb, but it's my first surgery as an adult, and I've never spent a night in hospital. So I walked down to the surgery, met the anaesthetist, met his colleagues. Uh, they lay me on a bed, or I think it was more of a trolley, and they started talking to me. They asked me my favorite city, which I said was Sydney in Australia. They put a mask on me. Next thing I knew, I was being woken up, but as I was falling asleep, I found it a really relaxed feeling. It was just as if 
all the pressures in my life had been taken off my shoulders, literally, but they were about to. Very relaxing as I drifted off. It felt like 15 to 20 seconds to me. I don't know if it was actually longer. The next thing I knew is I woke up, I started laughing, went, hello. And I didn't feel at all woozy, didn't feel any nausea, which I've been dreading because I do get car sickness. And the nurse told me it had been done. And I looked down, I've got a sling on me. And they say, um, carry on sleeping if you like. I said, uh, no, that's fine. This will take you back up to your room, which they did. And I was met by my friend who had taken me to the surgery, watched a bit of telly. The staff came in, uh, gave me uh, checking up and everything, uh, checked my blood pressure. My blood pressure was quite normal, but my pulse, because they checked the pulse too, was quite high, as was my heart rate, which caused a bit of concern. So every couple of hours, the staff came in. Shortly after surgery, they'd given me a couple of biscuits and some tea. I hadn't eaten since the night before because you got to fast before the surgery. So what I would say is talk to the staff, talk to the anaesthetist, talk to the surgeon about any concerns or fears you have. Don't be a hero. Don't be a martyr. This is your surgery. You deserve the best and you deserve to be put at ease. I'm not saying you will be given gas by everybody, but if you don't ask, you don't get. A no is the worst that's going to happen. A yes is the best. And they want to have an easy job. You know, they don't want to have to be too challenged. So whatever's easiest for you, whatever's easiest for them. But they should have, to an extent, the last word. Your word's important, but of course they are the experts and they should know what they're doing. I think they did in my case. I was met by the anaesthetist who checked that everything was okay. It was. Again, I had further blood tests. I had a delicious meal, Irish stew, most delicious tomato soup I think I've ever tasted. Gorgeous tiramisu. Lovely room, watched a bit of telly. I, again, I still did not feel woozy, still did not feel nauseous. Now, they'll give you your pain meds. I got my pain meds with my first dinner. Take the pain medication. Now, at this stage, I still had no pain. I felt a little bit tight, but no pain, no soreness whatsoever, which I was dreading. But I took my pain meds. Do take them. In my case, it was two paracetamol and one codeine. And I took everything as I should. Later in the night, about two o'clock in the morning, a doctor came to see me because he was a bit worried, as were the staff that I had quite high, quite a high pulse rate and quite a high heart rate. But it settled down, and that's probably due to anxiety. By the way, I'm still on the effects of the anaesthetic and everything, so if I stumble or stutter or stammer or look a bit tired, I hope, I hope you'll understand. Earlier, though, that evening, as a needle phobic, I did have something I absolutely dreaded. And it turned out that there was a problem with the blood test they took. If for some reason, there was something odd with the batch. So <laughs> a doctor had to come up and give me a blood test um, in this in this arm. I think you could just see it. Just see it there. Yuck. Anyway, I struggled there. My friend had to sort of calm me down a bit. I was effing and blinding for a short while. But it was over before I knew it. It's quite weird, though. And I have had an IV before when I had a colonoscopy earlier this year. Too much detail. But it is quite odd, a little bit odd spending the night with a little thing in your arm. But there you go. I asked for it to be bandaged up so I didn't have to look at it. I know I'm a pretty bad case. But the surgery all went well. Um, the surgeon came in this morning. It all went well, but he did explain they did have to do a biopsy. I think it was something on the tendon or bone that gave them concern. And he said he would see this with his patients maybe once every two weeks, once every month, where there's something to do with the bone or tendon which gives them concern that I may develop rheumatoid arthritis. It's a bit worrying, but they took a biopsy and they did a blood test, and hopefully next week I'll find out. He says there's a 98% chance I won't have rheumatoid arthritis, but occasionally, once every fortnight, once a month, he comes across a patient who has possibly a couple of symptoms. So he's a little bit of scr scratch. He, does, he described it as like scratching a fine car. But he said, I'd been very inflamed. The anaesthetist told me that too. I'd been very inflamed, but what I was told by the nurse was that during the surgery, he had manipulated my arm in all its movement, so I have full movement. Now, I have to learn to do the movements on my own because, of course, there is pain, but I have the capability to do it, which is good. So it looks like I am better, but the rehabilitation starts here. Now, after my final, you know, blood pressure test and all of that and pulse rate, a physio came in. Now, 
you must do your exercises religiously. I've already started them. They start immediately. I've been given five exercises to do. Here they are. I've got like a pendulum exercise. I've got a swinging exercise. What else have we got? Scapular setting where you sort of do things with your back. You arch it and everything. I've got to lie on my back as well and elevate my shoulders, elevate my arm. You've got to do things where you move your arm to the side and onto your stomach. I've already started them. A bit of a struggle, but I have been told when the physio looked at me, she said, I've already got a lot of range. So far, no pain. So far, the odd tingle occasionally, but no real soreness. Now, I don't know if I've got a high tolerance a threshold. I don't know if that's also the pain meds. It no doubt is, but no pain as yet. I've already also had about three hours sleep. Now, let me tell you what your best friend is. We'll stay there one second. It's this. It's an ice pack. Now, in this case, it's frozen peas. This will be your best friend. You put it in a plastic bag, the peas in a plastic bag. You put it in a pillowcase. And if you're leaning on something, you put it on your shoulder and you let it just sit there for about 15 minutes, about four or five times a day, 15 to 20 minutes. And really, it does help. It's natural, and there's no creams, no chemicals. The most natural thing you could have. The exercises, I've been told to do them about three times a day, ten times each. Now, do the exercises your hospital and physio tells you to do. Don't necessarily do the ones I do, because every hospital may do different things. So stick to the advice you're given. That's what I've been given. Now, there are things below, links below to my previous videos on this plus the condition calcific tendonitis and the arthroscopic surgery that I had. Let me just finally check if there's anything I need to have to tell you. Yeah, make sure you stick to your rehab. Take all your pain meds. Don't be a hero. Ice, 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 baby. It's your best friend. Let your surgeon and anaesthetist know of any concerns you have. Don't be scared. Let them know. And ask for any alternatives such as gas if you have a needle fear. And also... If you do need a needle, they can put an Emla cream on, which sort of numbs the area. So if you've got any questions, I'm making these videos, by the way, to help other people who may have needle phobias, who may have calcific tendonitis, who may be about to go to surgery or thinking of it. Please remember, surgery is always a last resort. Always. I've tried everything from osteopathy to physiotherapy to needle lavage to even acupuncture. And they've all had limited success, but I've continued in many ways to get worse. Soon I'm going to see the surgeon in about two weeks, and that's when I'll see a professional physiotherapist. At the moment, I'll do the physiotherapy at home about uh, three or four times a day. And he's going to look at the left shoulder because I've also got it in there. And he may, in there rather, and he's going to hopefully maybe do cortisol injection. Hopefully I won't need surgery again. But so far, so good. Slight bit of tightness, but no pain no soreness yet. I'll update you as soon as that changes. Stick to the rehab routine you're given. Stick to everything you're told and remember to ice. I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, I want you to know you're not alone. Please contact me. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. And here's the odd photo to let you know how things went. Bye-bye.